welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2017. I'm Max Scovel, and I'm joined by John Gavin and Jeff Ross from Ben's studio. And you guys have been showing off Days Gone, which is it's an open-world survival horror action-adventure post-apocalyptic zombie game. That pretty much sums it up. Okay. Like, all those things. Except yeah. they're called Freakers. Freakers, right. I, yes. knew you were gonna, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Sean Layton didn't call them that. He called them zombies. We had a talk with him. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> you guys showed this off uh, last year, and it was probably the most video game enemies I've ever seen on screen at once. Maybe not counting, like, Dynasty Warriors. But, like, it's, it's stunning and staggering how many Freakers you've got running around. Uh, and it was terrifying, but it almost seemed like that was sort of the one-trick pony side of things. And this year, you're showing us... Here's the open world, here's the motorcycle combat, here's the stealth, here's the humans. Uh, please, tell us a little bit about what's going on with this game. Well, you know, the big thing we wanted to show off this year was our dynamic open world systems. So last year we focused on the Horde, which is hundreds and hundreds of enemies on screen at once, and you saw what happened, he yeah. was running for his life. It's terrifying. Uh, and this year we had, there's a Horde in this year's stage demo as well, because you could see there's a moment where Deacon gets past this small marauder camp, and he's looking down, and a gunshot goes off, and you see the Horde kind of you know, to go chasing off to that sound. And that's still part, a huge part of our game, but we really wanted to show off um, the swarms, which are like a horde, but they're smaller. There's more of them. They're okay. more common. And you can use them as, as a tool and a weapon using our enemy faction system. Yeah, so the point of this demo was we really wanted to show off kind of how the open world systems all come together. Is, uh, and they are obstacles for the player to overcome, but they're also tools that the player can use to overcome, overcome other obstacles. So weaponizing the horde from last year, you know, we just want to show that this is a thing that can be wielded, that the player can use it as one of many different tools in his toolbox for taking on this, this complex, super dangerous, dynamic world. I love that. That's like that's a trope in, in zombie fiction. We've been seeing that for ages of like, oh, the bad guys are here. Well, let's let the zombies. The enemy of the enemy is, is your friend. Yeah. Uh, now, can we talk about the world a little bit? Like, I was, I was like, oh, man, we got some badass motorcycle stuff, and then... Deacon just gets clocked in the chest by a, a booby trap. Yeah, so you saw that on the stage demo last night, but if you're watching the, the B-roll we have here, it's a completely different way to play the same mission. So in this time, we've changed up the time of day, we've changed up the weather, you see it's snowing, and Deacon, because he wasn't being chased by the runners, which are infected wolves, he saw the ambush before he hit it, and, and that allowed him to sort of, you know, reconnoiter, go around behind them, and take them out from behind. So he doesn't hit the clothesline um, in this version of the demo, just wow. because uh, just because he was paying attention. Yeah, what we really want to do with this is show off that uh, this this world is dangerous. You cannot take anything for granted. You can drive down this road one day, and it'll be totally fine. But another day, you drive down, assuming it's all fine, and boom, you're knocked off your bike, and then you have a, a, a few seconds where you've got to fight for your life and and try to survive it. And it, we're really just trying to show how this world is so dangerous. It's lying in wait for the player, and we're. People thought that the horde was our biggest enemy. In many ways, humans are because they're more cunning and they're more lethal in their and they're more sadistic. And they're going to clothesline a man off his bike and try and steal his shit. So it's uh, really important for us to show that because we feel that that's the essence of Days Gone's dangerous world. But also with the with the alternate path that we're showing in the theater, we really want to show that tactical, smart, strategic, forward-thinking players can be careful. That they can become the aggressor. They can turn the tables on these guys if they're willing to use their entire tool set and take the time to, to not just drive into traps, use their binoculars, reconnoiter the place, and, and get the edge on these guys, turn the tables. It's really exciting and fun to come up on these guys who are lying in wait about to ambush you, and you ambush them. It's a okay. thrill. Okay, well, I gotta ask, this is, this is one thing that's been bugging me. Uh, Deacon is like a, he's like a bounty hunter mercenary type, but he's in this entirely unforgiving world. It seems like sort of a waste of money to be like, Hey man, uh, there's this guy I really don't like. Could you take him out for me? Even though he might be getting eaten by freakers already. What's the, what's this, what's the story with the civilization that exists here? Because we've seen. So we're not talking a, a lot about the story in the background yet, um, but you can see in the demo. So the demo we showed last year, we inter we introduced Deacon in the trailer, and you know he, he suffered some sort of a loss, and you know he's sort of the walking wounded, like everybody in this world is. And then in this year's demo, we introduced the encampments. So you see Copeland, who's the leader of one of the encampments, and this is where law-abiding survivors sort of gather together for protection. And the idea is that once you leave those encampments, um, the world comes for you. It doesn't matter whether you're on a job trying to find a bounty. Like Jeff was saying a moment ago, you could actually run into an ambush and get ambushed and get sidetracked completely just because people are there trying to kill you. But a guy like Copeland, who runs this encampment, 
he's trying to keep his people alive and he, you know, and he just feels a sort of sense of responsibility to them. And as a, as a bounty hunter and a mercenary, Deacon sort of earns camp credits by doing jobs for these different encampments. Okay. And he's just, he's, you know, trying to take care of his motorcycle and it just eat, try to right? survive. Yeah, survive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now we saw, um, <laughs> we saw some terrifying zombie bear, freaker bear, and we've also got the the, the runners. What they call the the runners? Runners, yeah, or yeah. infected wolves. Uh, how how much of a range of wildlife are we going to see that is infected? Well, last year we introduced the horde, the swarmers, and the newts and regular wolves, and this year we're showing the rager bear. We call it a rager, and we're and we showed in the in the alternate demo you're going to be able to see crows. Um, and you know all of these have a different impact on the gameplay. Oh wow! So yeah, it's it's not just it's not just mammals, or it's also birds and stuff too. Yeah. Okay, that's that that really screws things up. <laughs> that's terrifying. Uh, now we've got uh, we've got weather conditions here. Do they do they play an effect? Uh, like will will rainfall muffle footsteps or? A absolutely. Uh, rain will muffle footsteps. It'll tr it'll change the way that your bike handles. It'll change the way that the mud handles differently. It has this. The entire world responds accordingly to the way that we expect it would, and to, it's, re, it's super relatable in that way. But uh, as far as it applies to enemy senses, you can use it as one of the tactics to come in. There's, there's always trade-offs. There's going to be uh, different creatures around in certain conditions, but those conditions can also be beneficial to the player in other ways, depending on the tool set that he has and the tactics that he wants to employ. All right. Yeah, and it also impacts the, the freakers, because again, we're not talking a lot about the virus and how mm. it affects their metabolism. But when it gets night out, they're stronger. When it gets cold out, they become stronger. Really? So, yeah, okay. so that's one of the things you really have to be conscious of when you're playing the game. Okay. Uh, now, are you guys, like, there's obviously, there's always kind of different types of, like, zombie logic. You know, there's, there's whether it's... Freaker logic. Freaker logic. Well, I mean, in the greater scheme of, you know, of undead fiction, yeah. you know, as it were. Uh, are you guys kind of building this from the ground up, or are you sort of following existing rule sets? I know some people get really, they'll get, like, weirdly nitpicky. They're like, how would it, how would the virus spread to birds or whatever? Well, we have uh, a complete backstory that explains all of that, and yeah, we're very picky about our mythology, so we've created it from the ground up. We didn't really concern ourselves with what happens in, in other fiction. Okay, and you've got uh, you've got crafting mechanics in here too. Yes, we do. So it's a uh, it's an action survival game. You know, right. It's about it's about living off the, the land, kind of finding resources that you need out there, and uh, taking them back, selling them at the encampment so you can get extra supplies and kind of upgrading that way. But really, as the player evolves and as Deacon evolves and adapts, he can he can do more with less that he finds in the field, and, and that's part of the crafting system. It's it's a real kind of do it yourself. MacGyver sensibility, right. uh, whatever works. Right. And, and we, we've seen that on display a few times with last year's demo with the, with the airbag bombs, with uh, the dynamite that he rigs up on this, and the Molotov that he's putting together. It's just a, it's a few many things that he can put together, uh, recipes that he can learn to employ as, an, as one of uh, another set of tools in his toolbox. Okay. So when, when you say survival, there's, like, there's a bunch of different associations people have with it. And there's kind of the traditional like resources are scarce, scarce and then there's the other kind of more, more brutally unforgiving where like... You, you, if you don't really take care of your stuff, you're entirely screwed. Uh, will Will Deacon's health repair itself, or does he have to manage like healing assets? It's it's an action game first and foremost. So okay. it, where it has elements narratively and in the crafting system, it, it it's not it's not a super hardcore. But there are, you know there's certainly some aspects. So for example, the motorcycle can take damage. The motorcycle has to be fueled. Yep. So you know so there are elements where we want the player to be conscious of the fact that it's a post-apocalyptic world. Resources are scarce. You know you can craft um, medical supplies. You do need these things. Yeah. And and what people will see in the B-roll, the uh, alternate demo, is when he takes the bike off road and he's driving recklessly. It, it does take damage. You've got the fuel meter. He's, wow. got to, he's always got to know where his next fill-up's going to come from because he can run out of gas and be stuck out in the middle of this world without, without a plan. So it, it's something where it, it's, um, it still airs towards action, but the player has to be mindful of, of like the cool core resources that he needs to survive. Nothing's free. So if you wind up stranded without your bike, are you just entirely screwed, or is there like a fast travel retreat type of option? We'll, we'll talk more about that probably okay. in the future, but it's, it's a pretty cool system. But, uh, you know, Deacon's got one bike. Yes. And it's his bike, and he's got to take care of it, and he's got to know where it is and keep tabs on it. And, and other people want that bike, too. All so right. it and leads to some pretty cool, dangerous, dynamic moments, for sure. And it's not just going to walk up when you whistle for it. That's no. correct. Well, guys, thank you so much for, for coming by and showing this off. This game looks really, really impressive, and clearly, like, 
Ben has been quiet for a minute. I think people have been like, what have they been up to? And clearly, this is it. Uh, do we know when this is coming out and people will get we're a chance to? We're not talking about release dates yet. Okay, all right. But we're working really, really hard on it. All right, well, you have, you have more to show at Games to Come, perchance? coming up? Yeah, we're not really talking about that schedule either. Okay. But well, we're working really, really hard on it. I tried. Well, thank you guys so much <laughs> for coming by. We have lots more coverage of E3 coming up very soon, live from IGN. See you very soon.